downsides of fucking marijuana. Real buzzkill. And then we got what would you do? Alright. Don't go nowhere. It's all out show. What is going on, y'all? Another day, another dollar. That Powerball tonight. I better go play that Powerball. I know I did. I know I did. Now see, the thing with me is, if I do hit the Powerball and I hit the millions, I'm still gonna be Mopar, no car. Yeah, if I was at the power bar, I'd probably buy me a, a Mercedes Benz a AMG GT 63S, that new four door coupe that they have. And I would also buy me a Range Rover SVR because I always just wanted one to have in the stable. But my lineup would probably be keep the Durango. Keep the Durango. Get a track hawk. Wide body. Red eye. Hellcat red eye. Or wide body charger. If it is true that they're making a wide body charger. I don't know if it's true. That may not have been a, 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 a test vehicle that we've been seeing flowing around on YouTube. That may have been somebody that just kitted out a freaking why about look at this four focus st four focus st right here they're coming out with that ford explorer st i wonder how that's gonna look i wonder how that's gonna do maybe good may not be we'll see but yeah i hit that power ball i'm still gonna be in the more part no car if they come out that wide body uh charger hellcat red right eye i'm getting one of those keeping this durango srt getting the track hawk Range Rover SVR, Mercedes-Benz AMG 63S, and a G-Wagon V12. I don't like Ferraris and Lambos. It's not, it's not my, it's not my forte. Not my taste. Not into Italian vehicles. probably play with one, but I want to buy one to own it. Anyway, what's up, y'all? I haven't done a, a, a little driving video in a while. I haven't done much in a while. I don't know. You know, as I said, I just do this for fun. But anyway, you saw my other video. I got the uh, the Mopar Springs, Mopar Performance Springs, I'd rather call them, instead of lowering springs, because they really don't lower the vehicle much. But, as far as the handling, the cornering, um, the drivability of the drivability ability of the vehicle, it handles much different. It's a it feels more planted. It's a different beast. So that's why I rather call them. Well, they call them themselves performance springs more than they do Lauren springs. So that's what we're gonna call them. Mopar performance springs because they improve performance. They don't. They're not really for lowering the aesthetics and all that. But it did lower the vehicle some. I would say uh, what it did is it evened out the rake. So you know when these SUVs they have a rake where the front is lower, the back sits up higher. Like it's bent over, poking that ass out, face down, ass up. Well, there's no more face down, ass up. It's even. There's no rake. So the front is the same exact height as the back, and it looks even and more planted to the ground. So it didn't really lower much. But yeah, what it did was, uh, take the highway, take the highway, take the highway of the streets, I'm gonna take the streets. So yeah, that's what it mainly did. So there's no more rake. Everything looks even, flat, straight across, which I prefer that look over the uh, rake look anyway. Uh, got this RT in front of me. 
But yeah, the performance springs, man, they're a good investment. You got a Durango SRT, you on the fence about the performance springs, get them. They're worth it. I got mine off Amazon 325, shipped, no tax. I'm on the fence right now about copying the uh, Mopar Performance exhaust. I mean, this exhaust is pretty good. It's pretty good, it's pretty loud. You know, nobody's complaining about this exhaust. But they do offer a louder, deeper exhaust. Challenge it right there. Now, YouTube videos don't really do it much justice. I'm trying to find a good YouTube video that'll, uh, you know, show the difference between the stock exhaust and the Mopar exhaust. But it's hard to tell on YouTube. They all sound the same. You hear it a little bit louder, but at, at the end of the day, you start, the more videos you watch, the more they all just start to sound the same. What I'm thinking about, the cheapest I could find it online for is 1660 shit. And that's a lot of money to drop for an exhaust if it's only going to be slightly better than the stock exhaust, exhaust I have had now. So if anybody out there has heard in person the uh, Durango SRT Mopar Performance Exhaust that they sell, versus the current stock exhaust and if it's really worth that 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 1600 let me know because i'll get it that'll be the next mod that i put on this car because we all we all could use louder this is nice and loud but this is loud but at the same time it's uh you know it's conservative it's it's mature it's not like, you know, some loud, obnoxious tool driving through your neighborhood. Uh, I don't know if the other one is just loud 24 seven, if it sounds obnoxious, but this is a nice middle ground. But if I could get something that's, you know, just sounds a little bit better, I'll take it. But $1,600 worth, I don't know, I don't know. That's the question. But anyway, I'll see, I'm thinking about it. One thing I do have to say about these springs is uh, you will feel the road more. I have been feeling the road a lot more. Like it's not a minute difference where you barely notice it. No, you're gonna notice it. You're gonna feel the road more. It is what it is. That's what happens when you put on performance springs. This makes the suspension and everything stiffer for performance. Right now I'm at uh, focus, focus man, focus. It's not focusing, uh, there we go. 1,326 miles. So you can tell I don't do a lot of driving. That's where I'm at right now. Oh, I got the cops behind me in my rear view. I don't want them to see me recording. But yeah, that's where I'm at right now. <clears throat> and so far, so good. As far as like a review or whatever goes, mileage-wise. Um, it's horrible on gas, as we all know. Um, short real quick, I had these two lady cops behind me. They was on my ass, boy. I'm looking at my rear view. They looking dead in the vehicle. Don't want them to see me recording. But anyway, as I was saying... 1300 miles right now horrible on gas sidetrack real quick see this area right here 125th in Lexington 125th Street Lexington Avenue horrible 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 uh, horrible strip you got zombies walking around out here man zombies on that heroin and on that K2 weed it's it's horrible over here Anyway, as I was saying, gas mileage is horrible. Um, what you expect? It's called smiles per gallon. Smiles per gallon.
zoning out. Yeah, it's miles per gallon. You gotta pay to play. But um, it's worth it. What the come on, man. Jesus Christ. Some people. Um, that's the only bad thing about this vehicle is the gas mileage, but you know what you're getting into. Other than that, I have no complaints after having it for a thousand miles, a little over a thousand miles, 1327 now. Um, no complaints. The, one, the only complaints I had was in my previous videos, uh, factory, you know, blem, you know, blemishes, you know, defects on the outside, not mechanical, just, you know, cosmetic, should I say, cosmetic blemishes and stuff like that. Um, I am regretting the color. I am regretting the color. The black with the red stripes looks nice, but it stands out too much. It brings too much attention. I'm like the only motherfucker with the black Durango with red stripes in New York City, so everybody knows who I am. And that is a bad thing, because they see me coming. They know it's the guy from YouTube, or they know it's the guy that's from over here, or lives here. They know it's the same goddamn Durango that they be seeing around. And the black with the red stripe stands out too much. So one thing I would change, I would have gotten a different color. Specifically, I would have gotten Vice White. <clears throat> the only color option that you have to pay an extra price for. It's like an ivory tri -coat pearl. Called, they call, that's what they call it on the Jeep SRTs. But I would have got the pearl white. Because the body lines, like on the hood and the side body lines, and the, it, it, it stands out. The profile stands out more. The byline stands out more. Here on this black, you don't see the body lines and the hood scoops. It's hard to tell. But on white, it stands out a lot. So I would, if I could go back in time, I would get this, this vehicle in vice white. Same interior, red leather, same everything. Just vice white on the outside. No stripes. Nothing to stand out. No way that you could point your finger and say, there he goes. You have to look close. You have to look at the license plate to see how it's made. Even though I stand over my license plate because it's a fucking veteran license plate. But still, y'all know what I mean. But yeah, these road bumps, woof, you really feel them. You feel them a lot more. It's not that bad, but compared to what it was before I got the springs on, yeah, you feel them. You put it in a sport, the suspension in sport, a track, it's a wrap. No comfort at all. That's straight performance. But it's a trade-off, as I said. But yeah, no complaints. Um, It's been good to me. I've had nothing to break down. I haven't had to go to the shop for anything. Um... The range for the key fob is a little low, as I mentioned before. Key fob range is a little low for my liking. It should be a little bit further than what it is, but it's okay. I have the uh, I have the Sirius XM Guardian app, and I just use my phone. Um, but yeah, no complaints, man. It's been treating me good. Wish I had a panoramic panoramic sunroof. Look at this. Look at this. Don't block the box. Don't block the box. Gotta go around. Come on. Get that yellow text. So you gotta know where to, how to navigate this city, man. The FDR is packed and crowded. You gotta know which streets to take. You go on southbound. FDR is crowded, packed. Take Lexington or 2nd Avenue. Sometimes 2nd Avenue is crowded. You take Lex. Sometimes Lexington is crowded. You take 2nd Avenue. Today, look, Lexington is nice and, nice and smooth on Lexington. Same with northbound. FDR is packed coming northbound. You take 1st Avenue. 1st Avenue is crowded. You take 3rd Avenue. 3rd Avenue is usually smoother. But you got to to navigate these city streets. While everybody's sitting in bumper to bumper traffic on the FDR, they could be coming down Lexington. But let me not give up the secret to everybody because then the traffic's going to come out here. They about to start this congestion pricing bullshit. Put these, these tolls, these 
paperless tolls up and start charging you if you enter below 68th Street, I believe. 68th Street or lower. They're going to charge you a fare to drive below 68th Street. I don't mind it. The only thing that's causing all the goddamn congestion in this freaking city is only look at these taxis, taxis, taxis. That's all you see. Yellow taxis or Ubers. Come on, skateboard dude. Don't get killed. What are y'all doing? Look at this. Taxis, taxis everywhere. Or they're Ubers like this guy. You can tell by their license plate because this has the T. Ubers, taxis, lifts. That's what's causing the congestion in this city. How about y'all cut back on that? Cut back on allowing these dudes to have these freaking licenses and be out here taking money out the pocket of the MTA because everybody wants to take a Via, a Lyft, a Uber. But now you're moving slower than you were moving if you would take the train because there's so many goddamn cabs out here clogging up the clogging up the grid, causing gridlock on these streets. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> yeah, I saw all them pictures of that uh, supposed wide body charger. I don't think it's legit. I think it's somebody that just kitted out a charger, made their own wide body. It didn't have the nostrils that the 2019 has. I saw that they put that Durango. It looks more like a Durango on the front end. You got that big lip looking vent area that the Durango has. But I think that was just somebody just, you know, doing their own thing. I don't think that's like a direct from Chrysler test product. Um, but we'll see. We shall see. If I hit this Powerball, I'm going to get one. If I don't hit this Powerball, I'm going to be holding on to this Durango SRT for a long time, unless they come out with a Tricorp version or a Durango SRT Hellcat gotta get that there's nothing that's gonna beat that a fucking Durango with 707 all wheel drive come on now it's probably gonna cost a pretty penny though 90 grand what are you beeping at what are you beeping at dude anyway my my wife is 21 weeks along we halfway there my second son is coming. Firstborn's 19, about to be 19 freaking years old. Now I'm starting all over again. It's crazy. She's halfway there. He's doing August. Uh, can't wait. See what he looks like. Have another little me, little man out here. We gotta put some quality men out here, man. Quality men need to start having kids so you can put more quality men out here. You got a lot of trash having kids out here. You ever saw the movie uh, Idiocracy? If anyone's never, if you've, if you've never seen the movie Idiocracy, watch that movie. That is exactly what's going on here. Idiocracy. Watch that movie and you'll know what I'm referring to. Quality men need to start having quality kids and raising quality men and women. No discrimination here. But you know. The trash have more kids. But they procreate and reproduce like a motherfucker. They be having five, six, seven, eight kids. While people who try to get themselves together only have one, then struggle to have a second one because they waited so long in their life to try to have kids because they wanted to make sure that they were in a good situation and they're not just out here, you know, doing dumb shit. But yeah, the movie Idiocracy, you gotta watch that if you haven't watched it. Um, but yeah, so far, 1,000 miles in, spring's on. Let me know if I should get this exhaust. You guys think that that exhaust is worth it? 1660 shipped. That's a nip in the butt. That's, that's, a, that's a chunk, chunk of change right there. So you guys let me know. No complaints, man. I love this Durango. I thought I wouldn't like the Durango. I was a Jeep guy. I thought the Durango looked like a freaking manatee. Looked like a fucking manatee. You ever saw a manatee swimming in the water? Looked like a damn seal. Had a big ass, a big butt, and all that shit. But, nah, it looks good, man. It looks good. 
exterior, interior. It's very spacious, very comfortable, fast. I like it, man. I have no complaints whatsoever. Um, as far as professional review, like Savage Geese, the Saab Kyle, I go into nit nitty gritty details about every goddamn thing, but I'm not, so I'm just telling you the down to earth, real deal, my opinion. If you're on the fence, get it, man. It doesn't have to be an SRT model, RT, GT, V6, 5.7, it don't matter. Durango is a good vehicle. So is the Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's a great vehicle. By American. Where am I going to turn off at? Well, traffic's starting to get tight on Lexington. y'all that's about it let me get off this phone stop rambling talking to y'all this boring ass driving i'm doing deuces